Good morning, Las Vegas. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, April 16th, mid-April, and we're here. Uh, you know, this is our new show. We want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're going to be doing this from 8 to 8.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, we want to, we call our show, you know, our show Up to Date in Real Estate. And you're going to be seeing a lot of me, and you're going to be seeing Yesenia every Tuesday and Thursday. How are you doing, Yesenia? Good, good. How about yourself? Good, good, good. We wanted to do this as well because we want to make sure that everybody's informed. Yes. Obviously, yes. there's a lot of changes going on in real estate. There's a lot of things happening in real estate. Uh, there's a lot of people moving to the state from California, from other states. Uh, I have a lot of clients from out of state. So we want to make sure that we give all the information that we have. My name is Alfredo Rosales with Source Realty. I'm a realtor. And Yesenia? My name is Yesenia Alfaro with Residential Mortgage Services. Yeah, we've been doing this for a long time. I, I think I've been in the business for about 15 years now. Yeah, I've been in the since I've been 04. in the same industry since 2001. Yeah, since two, I've been since 04. I've been here in Las Vegas in real estate, uh, <laughs> doing various things. But uh, you know, I've been I've known you know a lot of uh, agents and I've done a lot of transactions uh, from end to you know from beginning to end, uh, whether it's listing, sell you know buying, selling. Uh, we've done all that. So, and then you've been doing this for a long time as well. So yes. we want to make sure that, we, you know, we, we teamed up on this show mm -hmm. uh, or this stream, we want to call it. I don't know if we want to call it a show, right? <laughs> up to date in real estate with yeah. the stream. Um, <clears throat> so we can inform uh, everybody out there of what's new in real estate. Yeah. And what's, you know, every obviously the news that come out every day in real estate. So you can make sure you have the information that you may need in order to make whatever decision you make. Yeah, Whether it's buying or selling, investing, uh, relocating, yeah. uh, whatever it is, there's programs for you. So uh, if you want to talk a little bit about yourself. Yes. Um, again, my name is Yesenia Alfaro. I'm with Residential Mortgage Services. I've been in the industry since 2001, and I could uh, pretty much say that I started from the bottom all the way up. Um, I started hey, in that's this. That's how I started. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started um, years and years ago. Um, I had just relocated to Las Vegas uh, back in 2001, and at that time, I, did, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. My background was accounting, okay, did accounting forever, and um, I started working as a receptionist at a um, mortgage company slash real estate company, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it was a huge building. A receptionist? Yeah, with two suites. I didn't know that. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> sure. Yeah, my background was accounting. And unfortunately, accounting here in Las Vegas did not pay as well as it did in California. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't sure this is what I wanted. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I was like, you know what? Meanwhile, let, let me just get started here. And um, I started right away buying my first property. And that's funny because that is exactly why and how I got started in this industry. I was buying my first home. I was uh, moving my family um, from California, my sister and her kids and my brother, uh, to move here in Vegas. And I was told at the time by the processor handling my transaction that my file was not going to close on time. And I'm like, well, it's a long weekend. I already have everything planned. You know, we're bringing everything. We're making a couple of trips. Like, I really need to get this house. So I immediately started doing my own research. Mm -hmm. I started making calls. Um, figuring out what I had to do, and um, I ended up closing the transaction yourself <laughs> a week and a half early. Okay. So I really loved seeing how everything worked. Um, I really loved how you can always beat the nose, you know, when someone mm -hmm. says no, 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 no. Um, I found a way to, to, you know, make it happen, and um, not only that, but I was very, I was very unhappy being the receptionist because I am a busybody. I'm always, you know, going a thousand miles an hour and just sitting there in this desk being the receptionist, I was not happy. Um, I would constantly ask for things to do and they, they wouldn't allow me to pretty much help other people. Long story short, I became an assistant um, for a realtor and for a loan officer. So I was able to learn both, both, ends. En both yeah. ends and to figure out how it worked. Um, after a while, um, I decided I wanted to learn even more. So I became a processor, okay? And after being a processor for a couple of years, then I became a junior loan officer, and then I became a loan officer. So I have pretty much have worked uh, everywhere in this field, except for, of course, being an underwriter, mm -hmm. <laughs> which course. I do not want to do. Um, but uh, I love what I do, and mainly I love doing this because I like every single file is a puzzle. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. it's, it's a different, it is. completely different from the previous one. So I love doing what I do. I love helping people, especially people that have challenging situations that have been told no a couple of times that mm -hmm. they can't get a transaction done. It just makes me very happy to help them, to coach them. But most important with our clients, we tell them exactly how things work. We don't sugarcoat anything and we help them from the beginning to the end. Yeah. And that's something that we always <laughs> uh, want to strive about what we do is it's, you know, we go to, you know, the farthest that we can go to help our clients. Yes. Uh, we go the extra mile, if you say. Um, you know, myself, I, I was in the military. Uh, you know, I was in the Navy. I am a veteran. I um, I was a correctional officer as well before I started doing this. And, you know, when I moved to Vegas, I was looking for a job because I was applying to the academy here because I was transferring. Mm -hmm. and, and in the meantime, I had to look for a... A job. A job, right? <laughs> so I ended up working at a real estate office. You know, I started as a listing manager doing, you know, data entry mm -hmm. kind of things. Uh, and then, I, you know, I moved up the ranks, obviously. Uh, I did escrows. I did sales and all this. And eventually I started managing, you know, offices and stuff. So, yeah, we, you know, I learned a lot. Yes. I mean, I'll be honest. I've dealt with a lot of transactions, more than you can probably imagine. So I've seen a lot of different situations <laughs> so that has a lot to say because now in day i mean i can be walking in my office and everybody try to you know try to stop me to ask me for a question yes which i don't mind that's okay yeah. because that's what i'm there for you yeah, know exactly i want to help my, my fellow agents so yeah so you know we, we do have a lot of experience together and we've been working together for a long time yes. as well so we want to make sure we bring that to the table yes you know that you get the experience you get the knowledge uh, the honesty, obviously, and we always make sure we tell the clients, just like you say, you know, I'll, I'll tell ahead. It, it, yes, it is. Exactly. You know, we don't like to sugarcoat anything. We don't like to tell clients that their closing costs or down payment is going to be less than what it's going to be just to get, acquire them as a client. And at the end, you know, pretty much kind of tell them, Hey, well, this is what it is. You take it or leave it kind of thing. Yeah. yeah no. We don't work that way. It's very important to build uh, a relationship with your client is very important to have that confidence with mm -hmm. your client. So uh, again, we love what we do. We're here to help everybody, and we're here pretty much to do what our the name of, of our little show here, which is up to date in real estate. Here. No, exactly. So, <laughs> and then one of the things that that we want to make sure, and, and I want to talk about Yesenia also, is that you know, qualifying a buyer is not as simple as hey, you know, what's your social, how much you make, okay, no. you're good to go, right? And hard. that's usually what happens. So we want to make sure and let everyone know that's not how it is. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of work that needs to be put into it. A lot. Um, and approval can take, you know, weeks if we don't have everything. Now, some lenders will give you an approval and then work it through, yes. and, you know, while, while you were looking for a house or yes. while you're under contract. Yes. And <clears throat> that a lot of things can happen in between yeah. there. I mean, you're, you're putting a lot of things to me personally. You're putting a lot of things at, at risk by doing that. Um, to me, it's very important, and that's why I think a lot, like a lot of realtors, when they call me that they receive an offer from our office, they ask me, hey, just want to know if you have qualified the client because they constantly tell me uh, this has been already mm -hmm. you know, in escrow for three times, and it's fallen out of escrow because it, lenders don't do their work and yada, yada. Um, we go the complete nine yards. Before I issue that pre-approval letter, we are going to look at everything that could impact the buyer's approval. Um, because we do not want to put the client's EMD at risk once they start looking at properties. If we ever have any questions, any doubts, we do have in-house underwriting. Mm -hmm. So we're able to pretty much just cross, uh, walk across the hallway and ask any questions that we might have. And be like, hey, is, yep. it, is it going through or not? Yep, right? yep, yep. <laughs> no, answer. I mean, trust me, there's been a couple times that, that I've had to myself battle with the underwriters because at the, we're all human, we all make mistakes, and there's a couple times that if I don't, if I don't believe something and you're telling me something because that's just what it is, trust me, I'm going to dig into it if, if I you don't... You tell me why. Yeah, tell me why. Why can't it be done this way? Yeah, don't say no. But, yeah, don't just I say mean, no. I mean, say no, but tell me why. But when, you, when they say, no, that's just the, the, the guideline, then my, my my response to them always is, show me show me the guidelines. Show me the guidelines. And I was talking to somebody, and I said, well, you know, they said we couldn't qualify because I get clients all the time and go to the house. Or go, I'm sorry, the, go to my office. And then they're, you know, oh, you know, they told us we couldn't qualify. And I said, well, why? I don't know. They don't they even just know. Told, yeah, they just told us we couldn't qualify. I said, well, that's, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, do you have a report? Do you have your credit report? They're yeah. like, no. I mean, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah. 
you know, and every lender works different. Of course. There's a lot of things that we take in consideration when qualifying a client. It's not just, sometimes people believe that because they have a great credit score, they're good to go. They're golden. And it's not like that. Yeah. Uh, we have to look at a lot of things. The credit score, um, the income, you know, the funds to close, if they have that available. Mm -hmm. um, that We still have a lot of clients that have waiting periods. Like right now, we have a client that wanted to purchase um, with the convention alone. They're putting about $50,000 down on this property, and unfortunately, they can't. They have to buy FHA because their waiting period from a foreclosure is not up until December of next year. And then you have clients also that, you know, promise. Oh, I promise I'm yeah. going to get a raise. I promise. I mean, well, we can't work off of that. I mean, I, well, I, I would love to and, help and I, you, but I mean. And not only that, but it's a, a, lot, of, a lot of things. If you leave documents lingering around that mm -hmm. you need and you don't take the time to really analyze them, Something as simple as a bank statement could cause your deal to go through. And I'll tell you why. There's a lot of clients, um, especially in, in, in our community, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of clients that unfortunately a while back they did not have good credit and they purchased a car under the brother or the mother or whatever and they pay it out of their bank account. But that car payment is not listed on their credit report. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't communicate that to your lender, your lender has no idea that you purchased a car under someone else's name, mm -hmm. but you pay it out of your bank account. So the minute that the underwriter receives that bank statement, if you have a car payment on there and it's not on your credit report, they're going to count it against you. And that could kill the deal because now your debt to income ratio is too high. And withholding the information would not help you at all. Of course I not. mean, if anything, it might jeopardize the purchase, which in return will make you probably lose money. EMD, EMD, home inspection, home inspection appraisal. appraisal. So, you know, they say the truth shall set you free. <laughs> I'm sure it will. So just be honest about it. Exactly. You know, and that's what we're there for. We're, we, you know, we're here to help. Exactly. We want to make sure that we have all the information that we need in order to make a, a good decision for you. Yeah. And in, the, in your case, give them a loan for a property that they can yeah. afford yeah. based on the documents and the information that we have. Yeah. Another another big one, I mean, there, there's a lot, and we're going to be speaking yeah. here every Tuesday and Thursday from 8 to 8.30 about different scenarios that we've had. Hopefully, it'll help some of you out there that are listening to us. Um, we will also speak about, you know, little twerks that you could do to be able to qualify a client that is not a simple guideline. There's mm -hmm. always a gray area. I mean, there's a lot of important information out there that unfortunately a lot of people don't share. Um, and I'm like you. I mean, I have a lot of um, fellow loan officers in my office that constantly come to me and ask me questions. And I don't mind because, you know, we're here to help each other. At the end of the day, we're a team and our focus should uh, be the same for everybody. Our focus should for be sure. for us to help the client be able to accomplish their home purchase or, you know, in your case, to sell the property or to refinance, whatever it might be. At the end of the day, you have to make sure that you're able to go home and sleep comfortably with no problem. <laughs> I know. I know. So a lot of things are happening in Las Vegas. Obviously, we got the Raiders Stadium, uh, you know, being done, uh, should be done next year. Next year. If I'm not mistaken, it looks pretty from outside. I mean. It was delayed for a while, but now they're back on track. So, yeah, yes, it so should there should be, be a track. It looks humongous. It's big. Yes. Uh Compared to my little baseball field, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, that we got in Summerland. Yeah, but that's uh, something new, too, that we it have is, now. It so. is. And, and that's some of the things that we're, we're looking at. Las Vegas Housing Outlook uh, for 2019. A lot of growth. A lot of uh, employment. Yes. A lot of things happening that creates this growth in Las Vegas. Yes. Obviously, prices are a factor. Prices keep going up because there's a lot of things going on. Uh -huh. The economy is really good. Unemployment is really low. The rates are still low. Yes. Uh, so everything is just, I mean, it seems. Everything's adding up. Yeah, it seems yes. kind of perfect. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a very important to take advantage of the market. There are a lot of down payment assistance programs that we work with. Um, and it's very important to take advantage of when they are available. Some of the programs that we work with are uh, first come, first serve. So, you know, even if you're approved with that program, but if you don't find something and they run out of funds, mm -hmm. you're pretty much out of luck. I so know. it is very important for you to be able to. Um, honestly, have the correct information. Um, it's very important for you to see what programs you qualify for. And sometimes applying for a down payment system might not be the best option for you. It just depends it on not. what your yeah. scenario is. Yeah, and, and everybody thinks, oh, you know, I'm a, and, and I keep getting this all the time. I'm a first time home buyer. Yeah. I want to use the benefits of a first time home buyer and get the money for it. And they confuse what an FHA loan is yes. with a down payment assistance. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, as a first-time home buyer, you can use FHA, which is three and a half percent. But or, that may not be the the right choice either. Or you could purchase conventional with three percent right. down. Exactly. Depending on what your credit score is, I mean, there's a lot of factors that we have to take in consideration when we qualify a client. So it's very important that you have all your facts, mm -hmm. 
all your you know all your ducks in a row uh, to be able to pretty much <laughs> quack, quack. you know right <laughs> so pretty much take the take the best advantage of what's out there it's very important for you to have 100% um, confidence and trust in your loan officer in your realtor because if, if you don't have that confidence to tell us anything that's going on on your end 